Has Rachel Reeves completely stuffed up the used electric car market? Well, I'm going to look at some figures in a minute and find out. I genuinely haven't looked at them first, but we're now approaching the end of 2025. We're into December, so I usually do a bit of a kind of EV market health update for the used car market. So I'm going to do that in a second with a particular focus on has Rachel Reeves' announcement recently to add a three pence per mile charge to EVs, probably from 2028, affected the price and desirability of used electric vehicles? It's interesting because new electric car sales have been going very well. I mean, over a quarter of all new car sales in the UK last month, November, were electric only, which is great news. That's been increasing. There's a lot of skeptics out there still, of course, and we always try and address the questions about limited range now all the time. Just did a trip a couple of weeks ago to the north of Scotland and back. A range for EVs is not a problem. Uh, so they're great cars. They're much more reliable than combustion cars. And people talk to me like I forget what a combustion car is. I've had them for many years. But we've got two testers here that are over 200,000 miles, and they're just great and not had problems. So reliability, good. But the focus here is, is about the used electric car market, what's happening in terms of EV demand and pricing and desirability. So I'm gonna look at that live. Ironically, using um, data from Autotrader, and Autotrader is the biggest used car platform in the UK by, by a fair way. Uh, they've got real dominance in the market. And so before I get into the data, I will echo the concerns and the annoyances from other car leaders around the UK at the moment with Autotrader. Autotrader is vastly expensive. Even a small dealership like us, we spend thousands of pounds a month with Autotrader to list our cars on their website platform. And it's hugely expensive. It goes up all the time. They now give quite a lot of data like this, which, okay, is kind of handy, but in reality, if the phone rings or not, that's fine. But one thing they've started to try and implement recently has really been getting the goat of most car dealers is a policy whereby you can be on Auto Trader and click and reserve a car for £99. We then, as a dealer, are kind of expected to just take that car off sale for like 20 days or something. Um, pending whether somebody then might go ahead or not and cancel it and have a refund. Well, I'm not going to take a deposit for that car, take it or sell, wait 20 days for you to decide whether you still want to buy it, and then maybe then relist it, put it back in the market, and give you 100 quid back. That's not happening. I don't know quite where the reality lands for Auto Trader. They might be getting feedback that customers want that. Well, want and practicality doesn't work like that, you know. Um, so I will echo the disappointment with Auto Trader that many another dealer has vented and there's been some good videos out there from other car dealership managers. So let's move on with the stats and how the EV market is, shall we? I've not looked at this data yet, so this is the first time. I don't know how it's gonna go. Let's start off with the last 13 weeks, the last three months. And what I'm gonna look down here is um, the market health of different fuel types. So. Again, let me just explain market health. It's, it's this kind of balance between demand, so how many people are looking for the car, um, uh, versus supply. So it's not always as obvious as it sounds. I explain it as I go along. might make more sense. But in the last 13 weeks, the market health for electric appears to be down 15%. Diesel plug-in hybrids up. Now, they get a one and a half pence per mile surcharge. And, and I forgot to say earlier on, by the way, a lot of people with this three pence per mile charge, it's not gonna come in for three years yet, two years in April, uh, if it makes it. <laughs> but it's a charge EV, three pence per mile, and, and manage that through basically MOT centers checking your mileage, and then a mileage check when you buy and sell a car and such like. It, what I've seen a lot of is kind of petrol and diesel drivers kind of gloating that, that oh, they're gonna be charged three PMR, <laughs> you know, we don't. Um, and it's silly because, by the way, uh, petrol and diesel has been charged a heavy tax at the pump for a long time, like 54 pence per litre that you put into your car. It works out, by the way, on average, that petrol and diesel has already been charged at about six pence per mile for some time. So, and that fuel duty tax is due to go up as well. Of course, all taxes are going up and we're all just being taxed to death. I mean, if you're hardworking, employee or business owner in the UK, you just get taxed to death. So um, the wind goes out of your sails very quickly and very easily. But anyway, that's not what the video is about here. So let's get back on point. What's the demand like for EVs on the market today? 
So on the face of this, whereas diesel is down 5% and petrol is down 1%, electric is down 15%, but this is called market health. So let's drill down and have a look a little bit closer. Last 13 weeks. So interesting. First time I've seen this page. Demand for the last 13 weeks is up 25% from the last year. So demand is up, but supply is also up 46%. So there's just a lot more EVs on the market, you know, lease companies, trade auctions. There's more every day coming off the lease companies because three years ago, you know, the EV market was really picking up. So there's just a lot more in supply, but this is the crucial number. Demand is up on the used market plus 25%. So that's straight away now snub those, those headlines that say no one wants to use DV anymore. We can see here the data's up. We can see a downwards curve over the last 13 weeks, so since September. But look at last year, that's also similar. It goes downwards. It's just the time of year. It is December, it goes quiet. Who wants to go and buy new cars right before Christmas? It tends to die off, it really does. So um, I can't see a massive plummet at the time of the budget announcement. Uh, which would have been about here. I mean, it's, it's still dipping, but within the line that it was before, to be honest. So uh, let's not worry too much about that. Let's actually drill down a little bit more to the last four weeks and just see if that changes. So again, it's not like there was a budget announcement and then here, poof, it dropped off the floor. It's just a general downwards demand project, uh, trajectory, really, as we head towards Christmas and, and New Year. So um, let's expand that back out to 13 weeks. So we get the last three months. So demand is up for electric. There you go. There's your proof. Uh, let's clear this. Let's just have a look at then diesel by comparison. And let's go to here, which shows us just being down 5%. So you think, oh, more people want diesels. Well, no, they don't. Look, demand for diesels is 15% down. Again, sliding down as we approach Christmas and New Year, same as it did last year, but there's less demand for used diesels on the used car market than there was previously. Uh, supply is up 10%, uh, sorry, minus 10% as well. So because supply is down, uh, it balances out the demand being down a little bit. And that's why the market health shows a minus 5%. Demand is down though, but also because supply is down, just as less diesels now, they're not as popular now, or three years ago, you know, lease companies and such like. Um, shall we just have a quick look then at uh, petrol and hybrid? The hybrids are interesting. Um, in terms of they get charged, it's one and a half pence per mile. Yeah, see, so demand for petrol down 6% as well. Again, tracking the same as last year, really. It hasn't jumped up since the thing about three piece EVs either. So, you know, we'll probably just missed some of that. I wouldn't say Rachel Reeves has completely destroyed it. <laughs> like some headlines. Uh, supply also down. So, again, that's why that balances out 1%. Um, yeah, what I started to say there was. Plug-in hybrids are going to be charged one and a half pence per mile because obviously some of the times they're, they're paying for tax at the pump with fuel and some of the time they're running on electric only. So the best thing the government could say is, well, let's just say one and a half pence for you know, kind of taking into account the balance. None of this, by the way, will take into account mileage that you drive abroad. You're just going to have to pay for that as well, by the way. I know quite a few people commented in other videos about that. So with plug-in hybrids, I guess if you just run on electric only and you very, very rarely buy fuel, then you could be better off. However, if you're paying for quite a lot of fuel and copying the mileage charge, then you're going to be worse off. So it's ever, even more than ever, in theory, if this goes ahead, having a plug-in hybrid could swing one of two ways. You get a plug-in hybrid with good EV range and really only use EV, you could actually do quite well out of it, but if you're buying petrol and paying per mile, then you can do bad out of it. So it can swing both ways on that. Uh, right, I'm gonna drill down just a little bit more to the Tesla market in particular, um, because it's always quite divisive with uh, what's happening in the Tesla market. So let's go to Model 3, the staple diet of the used car market for EVs. So demand is down 2% compared to last year. You can see the sort of dotted line for last year. It's tracking pretty much the same. It's tracking pretty much the same there. Um, but supply is up 18%. So already what we've seen was demand was always improving year on year with EVs and with the Teslas. Um, but there the demand is steadied out. So it's fairly neutral compared to last year, which means that market health shows a, a little bit negative because there's just more in supply. Personally, we've found that recently, the second, you know, 
second half of 2025. Model 3s and Model Ys have been very good, very popular, and they're our staple diet really today. We sell quite a lot of them day in, day out. Superbly reliable cars, brilliantly good like that, I have to say. Uh, this is a quick look at Model Y because obviously they're a little bit newer to the market in the UK. Uh, so demand for Model Y, look at that, 76% up. Very strong Model Y demand. Lots more around. Again, they are now in the UK for like four years now. So, of course, there's just lots more around than there was before. Uh, so the supply is up, but demand is very strong. And yeah, we've been selling Model Ys. It's weird because there's a new Model Y version out now. But where the used ones have come down to sort of anywhere between 20 and 30,000 pounds for your kind of three years, nice mileage example, Great family cars, and they've been a really good step for people that maybe own like a Nissan Qashqai, say 12, 15,000 pounds, and it's the next step up to that next family car, and they're getting into that, and that's really good to see. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's great. Yeah, good. So, uh, Model Y is doing well, and great value on the used car market. So, I, I, won't, I think I'll probably leave it there. I won't go into too much more detail. Um, because the key thing we've got to remember is that demand for electric cars is still remaining 25% up. What I can probably do here is look at the last 52 weeks. So let's just get now, because we're nearly at the end of 2025. Uh, this year, compared to last year, demand for electric cars on the used car market is up 29%. So demand for used electric cars, as you can see there, is up 29% in 2025 from 2024. Lots more in supply as well. Crucially, demand is up. So we can round it up with that number, really. In 2025, demand for electric cars in the used car market increased by 29%. That's it. That's great. If you're a used car dealer and you don't want to get into EVs, that's cool. It doesn't bother me. Um, you know, that's our business, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, but, you know, what I want to project from this video, I guess, is that when people read those headlines, you know, people... They, even the BBC and Telegraph trying to do all dramatic headlines. EV drivers, no one wants EVs anymore. Rachel Reeves kills EVs. No, no one wants to pay 3p a mile for EVs. You know, it's all dramatic. It's to sell news. It's to sell papers and online adverts for clickbait. And so <laughs> read past the headlines, dismiss the rubbish and lazy journalism. This is independent data. It's not my data from... Auto Trader, much as I've got some disagreements with Auto Trader, this is their data. They are the biggest platform in the UK. And so any dealer can look at this data as well and verify it's not me making something up. Demand for used electric cars is up, it is strong, it is good. So, along with my ring alert there, <laughs> I shall bid you a farewell on our last market update for 2025. And uh, we'll carry forward and see you in 2026. Keep subscribed and we'll speak to you then.